So, I have been discussing on properties of polymers and I have started discussion on thermal, mechanical and viscoelastic properties. In this lecture, I will focus mainly on thermal properties and on amorphous state. As I was discussing at the end of the last lecture that thermal properties of polymers are very important for processing as well as product performance and the mechanical and rheological or viscoelastic properties of polymers are also well related with the thermal properties as I will discuss in coming lectures. Again as we have discussed amorphous polymers they are entangled frozen mass with no practically no order and this polymer are characterized by a glass transition temperature. Similarly, for a semi crystalline polymer we have both amorphous domain and crystalline domain which corresponds to Tg and Tm glass transition temperature and melting temperature. So, we have been talking about this glass transition temperature and melting temperature these are the typical thermal transitions in polymer sample. Now, if we think about a liquid say like water and decrease their temperature what happens? when the temperature is decreased it becomes more viscous and it flows less freely. Now, when the temperature is sufficiently low then small molecules like water or other small molecules simple molecules they crystallize at a particular temperature quickly form a solid crystalline material and that temperature is called melting temperature as we all know that. But if the sample or the molecules present in this liquid state are large quite large like large polymer molecule and in complex shape then it is very difficult for this molecule to undergo translational and conformational reorganization to pack in a crystal like manner like when you form a crystal then it has to come and align themselves in a particular order. Now, if the polymers are very large then they are all entangled with each other in liquid state. So, when you decrease the temperature sufficiently then also it is not possible for the polymer molecules to undergo translational and conformational reorganization to fit into a crystal lattice. Now, if that happens in some cases and also if the structure of the polymers is so irregular that this crystallization structure cannot be formed. And if the polymer is not able to crystallize then the, if the temperature is reduced further and it goes below a certain temperature it becomes rubbery rubbery in nature and if you reduce the temperature farther then the viscosity of the liquid becomes so high that it is like a solid material it does not flow at all it is becomes very hard and polymer glass material. So, it is it does not have a regular arrangement of like a crystal structure, but it is viscosity is so high that there is no mobility of the molecules and is almost like a solid material. And in this case the conformational changes associated with the normal volume contraction or crystallization now no longer take place in the glassy state because there is no freedom at all. So, the conformational changes associated and volume contraction because of decrease in temperature further does not happen. So, the thermal coefficient of expansion of this material glassy material falls to about one third of the value in a warmer liquid condition because it cannot 
have the molecules are large and they are almost like a frozen state they do not have any mobility. So, it cannot contract during decrease in temperature. So, the coefficient of thermal expansion for this glassy materials falls about one third of its value compared to warmer liquid condition. So, if we graphically represents the volume versus temperature curve if we start from a molten molten state and decrease temperature the volume decreases and if the material can pack well crystallize then volume suddenly drops and a solid state is formed at melting point or melting temperature and when we decrease further the volume change is negligibly small because it is in a solid state now. But as we said if the molecules are large like large polymer molecule then they do not have enough flexibility or enough freedom to rearrange themselves and pack in a crystal matrix. Hence, it will continue to without crystallizing it will continue to decrease its volume and as temperature will come in fact, a range of temperature will come when it cannot contract further because practically there is no mobility because it is extremely high like a solid and this particular temperature is called glass transition temperature and below which there is not much contraction. Now, as you can imagine if we cool it at different rate then this temperature glass transition will vary little bit because if we cool faster then you are giving less time to polymer to rearrange and, and pack or basically access uh, different or become compact. Whereas, if you give you more time then polymer still have some time to basically orient themselves or um, change uh, the conformation and further compact. Hence, if we generally if we do cooling faster then we get a higher T g value compared to a cooling where we are doing a much slower, slower uh, rate there we generally get a lower T g. So, for 100 percent crystalline we get a T m glass transition temperature for a amorphous 100 percent amorphous we get a glass transition temperature, but unlike the melting point or melting temperature glass transition temperature actually varies depending upon different heating or different cooling rate. Because this determine or the time a polymer molecule can get to reorganize themselves and compact or expand. The temperature at which the polymer undergoes this transformation from a rubber to glass is called glass transition temperature or T g. We will discuss more about this T g and see what is actually happening in terms of molecular molecules. Now, in case of a semi crystalline material which have both uh, amorphous phase and a crystalline phase. In that case if we decrease the temperature then part of the polymers will actually crystallize and because there are amorphous region or regions which are not crystallized then this change will not be as sharp for a 100 percent crystalline small molecule. So, there will be a range of temperature during which this crystallization or part some of the polymer molecules will crystalline and we call again like melting temperature, but in this case unlike this case there will be a range of temperature where these um, polymers will crystallize and it will continue after that till we reach glass transition temperature below which the contraction becomes much much lower compared to 
the state IR. So, this is a purely 100 percent amorphous material and this is a semi crystalline material which has partly crystalline domain and partly amorphous domain. So, this is for semi crystalline. So, crystallization polymers do not crystallize completely as we discussed earlier. It crystallize or melt over a range of temperature as I just discussed especially if there are high molecular weights. The temperature at which polymer undergoes crystallization on cooling that is called melting temperature T m. So, now we know what is T g or glass transition temperature for a polymer and a melting temperature or T m for a polymer sample. Remember here we are telling the temperature at which polymer undergoes crystallization on cooling because on heating sometimes there could be a crystallization heating induced crystallization and that will also induce crystallinity, but that is not a melting temperature that is called T c or crystallization temperature which is not a true transition in per se. It basically when we heat a amorphous sample sometimes if the polymer structures are uh, um, basically uh, inducive conducive they can actually form uh, crystal crystal domains. So, we in a particular temperature which we call T c or crystallization temperature. We will come back to glass transition temperature this is the temperature at which the glassy state is changed to a rubbery state or vice versa. The glassy state is a short range in glassy state we have short range vibrational rotation motions of atoms and which is a hard rigid and brittle state. Whereas, rubbery state we have a long range rotational motions of the segments about 20 to 15 atoms and it is soft and flexible. Now, when you heat through T g there are breakdowns of van der Waals forces onset of large scale molecular motion in polymer molecules. Polymer goes from glassy rigid to rubbery behavior and for a perfectly amorphous or a completely amorphous material this is very important because that gives the upper surface temperature in amorphous polymer. So, basically if you talk about uh, PMMA polymethylmethacrylate which is having T g of 105 degree centigrade then that is the highest temperature. In fact, the temperature is little lower that that is the usable temperature for a PMMA or for polystyrene if the T g is 100 degree. So, the highest useful temperature is probably 90 degree or 90 and so on. So, basically that is the upper surface temperature in amorphous polymer. So, the ability to form glasses is not confined to non crystallization listable polymer. So, when you are talking about glass transition temperature it is not only restricted to polymers there are other examples where glass formation takes place like the glass we typically like sleeker glass we typically use in our uh, household items. They are not polymeric, but they are semi uh, what you call semi uh, ceramic glasses and uh, so basically any material that can be cooled sufficiently below its melting temperature without crystallizing will undergo a glass transition temperature eventually. Above the glass transition temperature if the polymer is amorphous and linear it will flow, but have a high viscosity, but if a polymer is crystalline means partly crystalline then melting temperature is the always above the glass transition temperature of that particular polymer. So, if we have a semi crystalline polymer I have a T g which is lower than the T m and my upper surface temperature would be the T m in this particular case. We continue our discussion on amorphous state or glassy state and in this case the polymer sample consists of long chain polymer molecules 
entangled with each other like a liquid like manner. There is no order, no long, long range order in this case, but with a complete absence of rapid molecular motion which is typical or typical of a liquid. In case of liquid we know the molecules are always moving and, and you have a um, particular velocity along with uh, associated with those molecules. But in case of polymer glass or amorphous glass, there is no long range ordering like a typical liquid, but there is no motion of or the more molecular rapid motion in this case of polymer glass. So, there is a difference between a typical liquid and a polymer glass. So, in true sense polymer glass is probably more alike like a liquid state, but because it has no molecular uh, motion and the viscosity is completely how uh, high. So, practically in pro practical form um, point of view it is actually a solid material from a practical point of view, but in a molecular point of view it is a liquid material. So, it has immobile molecular backbones which are fr frozen in entangled conformation does not exist or exhibit a crystalline x-ray diffraction peak. It is only shows a diffuse ring. So, unlike a crystalline material which gives a discrete ring and gives a crystalline x-ray diffraction pattern amorphous material do not give those uh, discrete uh, ring, it gives just only diffuse ring. In as I said in older literature, these are often referred to as amorphous state is often referred to as liquid state, but at present the polymers in a glassy state are better called amorphous solid. Small angle, this is very important, small angle neutral scattering has been used to show that for a pure amorphous polymer, the polymer molecules adopt their unperturbed dimension. We talked about different dimensions like end to end distance in different with, with increasing restriction and we talked about unperturbed di dimension there. So, basically which happens for polymers in theta solvent if you recall. So, for pure amorphous polymers the size of a polymer will resemble with the unperturbed dimension like the dimension in a theta solvent. Now, the glass tension phenomena is also described from a free volume theory. Now, free volume is the space in a solid or a liquid sample that is not occupied by the polymer molecules or is the empty space between the molecules. And in liquid state obviously, the free volume is high which enables easy molecular motion and with decrease in temperature most of the thermal contraction of the polymer rubber or melt can be accounted by a decrease in the free volume. So, with decrease in the temperature the free volume actually decreases and as a result the volume of the sample decreases which basically cause the thermal contraction. So, if we plot a volume of a polymer sample with say temperature, if we plot temperature here and volume of the sample and this is uh, V 0 which is basically the volume of the polymers, the polymer molecules which is slightly dependent on the temperature as the temperature increases the volume goes up. But the total volume, if you think about total volume then this is the total volume and as we decrease the temperature the total volume decreases quite sharply in molten state and 
below the glass transition temperature there is no further contraction possible as we discussed because of the frozen molecular motion. Hence, this total volume remains almost same. Now, this difference between the actual volume and the volume of the polymer molecules are termed as free volume, this is called free volume. So, the free volume after or below the T g remains almost same. So, the value of free volume below this T g this value is almost constant no matter what is the temperature whereas, above T g the free volume increases with temperature. So, with decreasing in temperature most of the thermal contraction of the polymer rubber melt can be accounted by decrease in vol free volume eventually at some temperature which is T g there will be a not be enough free volume there will be not enough free volume for the molecules to reorient or change the conformation for further compaction. So, if, if somebody if the polymer molecules want to further contract it requires some space to rearrange themselves. If that space is not enough if there is only entangled there is no space obviously it cannot further compact. Although thermodynamically it wants to compact, but because there is no free space available it cannot contract. So, this is say T g. So, basically eventually at the some temperature T g there will be no not enough free volume to allow molecular motions to take place for further reduction in free volume. So, total volume is given by the volume of the polymer molecules plus the free volume and the fraction of free volume is given by the free volume divided by total volume and this is the free volume below T g. So, this value is this difference in volume is V f star the free volume below glass transition temperature. So, the total free volume is given by this free volume plus change in temperature and the rate of change of volume with temperature. Rate of change of volume because this does not change much the fraction of free volume is given by free volume before or below the glass transition temperature and the thermal if we divide by divided by a volume both the sides we get this expression. So, 1 by y 1 by v d v by d t will be given by thermal coefficient expansion of free volume or coefficient of thermal expansion of free volume. So, alpha f is the expansion coefficient or coefficient of thermal expansion of free volume. Now, looking at the polymer structure we can actually find out there are different factors which influence the value of T g as uh, intuitively you can guess if the backbone structure is more stiff obviously, the mobility or the rearrange uh, the, the capacity or the tendency to rearrange, rearrange themselves will be lower and the T g will be higher. If the steric effect is higher which means again the probability of rotation around the single bond will come down T g will be higher. If the intermolecular force is higher obviously, again the chains will not be able to rotate more freely the T g will be higher. Similarly, the factors which increase the free volume like by reduce the molecular weight adding a plasticizer molecule or a long chain side groups they actually increases the or influence the free volume. So, basically they influence the value of T g. 
So, if you increase the rigid group in the backbone, then T g goes up. If you increase the flexibility, then T g goes down. If you increase the steric hindrance, T g goes up. If, if you increase the polar functionalities, then T g goes up. If you increase the cross linking, obviously, the mobility will come down, T g will go up. Similarly, in terms of free volume, if we add plasticizer which will increase the free volume, T g will go down and if we have a long plasticizing size group, side groups then also T g will come down. We will give some examples, comparative examples to show this, uh, uh, show this uh, trends, but you must also remember that it is not always that single factor which is in effect like if you have different side groups, they may actually increase the steric hindrance, but decrease the polar interaction. So, what I want to say that it is very difficult to completely account for the T g values by only one factor. There could be multiple factor, which is actually finally responsible for the T g value of the polymers. For example, if we talk about this uh, compare the T g value of these three polymers, then this is silicon oxygen bond is very flexible, even flexible than is carbon carbon bond bonds. Similarly, if we have aromatic background obviously, the flexibility is much lower or the stiffness is much higher. Hence, the T g as you can expect this will be much higher for this. So, if we if we give the values, so this will be minus 120 and this will be uh, this, this polyethylene this has a, a the T g is not a fixed like minus 80 as I mentioned here. This is a representative value. The T g of polyethylene actually depends on various uh, uh, parameters like the molecular weight, uh, crystallinity, branching and so on, but it is having quite low T g and it has a actually a range of T g. So, it can from minus 100 or minus 120 to even go around plus uh, just less than 0 degree and so on. As you can see that the stiffness of the backbone increases, the T g goes up. Similarly, if we compare these three uh, polymers as if you introduce a carbon oxygen bond, this flexibility goes up, hence the T g will expectedly go down and if we increase the aromatic group in the backbone, T g is expected to go down as the stiffness will go up. So, if we compare this value as you can see this minus uh, 80 is minus uh, 60. This, this example this might increase the flexibility, but because of the intermolecular interaction is higher presence of polar group, the T g is actually little higher in this particular case. As I was saying that there could be multiple factors which determine the value of T g. In case because of the uh, stiffness is higher, the T g is much higher compared to these two polymers. If you compare the T g of this uh, 4, as you can see if you increase this uh, CH 2 groups, then the flexibility will be higher when we have this aromatic group flexibility or stiffness will be high, uh, flexibility lower stiffness will be higher. As you can see this T g value comes down, but because of the aromatic groups in the backbone, the T g is drastically higher. In this case, if you carefully look that as we increase the CH 2 groups, actually number of polar groups is decreasing. So, in, in fact, in these cases the intermolecular forces actually decreases, which should also account for the decrease in this T g value for this sample. Similarly, if you compare these two, obviously this is a much stiffer it will should have a much higher T g value compared to this polymer. When you compare the steric effect of the side group, 
you can see that as you increase the, the size or bulkiness of the side group, the steric effect increases and the rotation around this single bond becomes more difficult and stiffness increases as a result T g goes up as we increase the steric size of the uh, side group. Similarly, if we have polar groups obviously intermolecular interaction goes up between polymer chain as a result T g goes up if we compare these two you can see this is a higher temperature higher T g and if you compare these uh, three then obviously presence of chlorine will increase the intermolecular interaction as a result T g will go up as it is seen here. Intermolecular interaction compared to a hydrogen and methyl group, methyl group will have a higher intermolecular interaction because of higher van der Waals forces between the polymer chains as a result you have higher T g. This will also increase the steric hindrance that will also contribute to increase in the value of this T g value of this polymer. If you compare these three cases then as we increase the polar substitution the in this case the steric effect are almost similar. So, the intermolecular forces or the polar effect will be mostly detrimental for um, value of T g. If you look at this value the higher is the polarity higher is the value for T g for these polymers. Now, this is for the contribution from the free uh, plasticizing groups or increasing the free volume. In this case in methacrylates if we increase the size of this R group and now once you increase the size of the R group this becomes more flexible and as a result the free volume increases and as the free volume increases the T g comes down because as the free volume as I explained that the free volume increases it has more chance or more space to rearrange itself at a particular temperature. So, it can go down the T g can go down further. So, if you compare these values methyl, ethyl, propyl, butyl you can see as we increase the chain length the T g value increases stay, decreases steadily. When you increase the size of the side group like if you compare a an N propyl and a isopropyl group because this is this is a linear chain and this is a more, more of a bulkier group this will have higher T g. Similarly, from a normal propyl to a this uh, butyl uh, propyl group you have higher T g similarly compared to a normal butyl to a tertiary butyl you have a much higher T g. So, which means that long linear side change actually increase the flexibility and decrease the free so increase the free volume as a result the T g goes down. If we add small molecules which are miscible which dissolve in the polymer matrix it actually decrease the T g quite significantly and that is used for aiding polymer processing uh, process if the polymer T g is higher then these plasticizers are added to decrease the T g for um, helping in processing and that happens because on dissolving small molecules the uh, free volume uh, increases. Whenever there, is, whenever there is a requirement of very high heat stable polymers as you can see these are amides or emides which are very aromatic groups in the background. So, in this case it has very high intermolecular forces and very high rigidity or stiffness in the backbone. As a result you can see the T g values are very high and these are use these polymers are used in a very high um, challenging environment where heat 
resistant polymer requirement of very heat resistant polymers are very high like in space applications or where the friction is very high the polymers need to sustain that particular heat. There are some other observations about T g values, but there is no generaliz generalization. For example, unsymmetrical substitution have higher values for example, this has a higher value than this and so on. So, these are some, some of the values you need to remember or if, if required you need to find out from literature there is no particular trend. Similarly, uh, the glass tension temperature dyne polymers also is not very predictive in terms of cis and trans and tacticity also actually um, change the T g value. Basically, if we have a more more order structure then packing becomes easier or and as a result the T g value should be lower compared to a uh, where T g value should be higher compared to a situation where there is no basically no particular order of tacticity. For example, isotactic PMA it is having much lower T g value compared to a uh, syn dietetic. In fact, these are it is predicting or explaining this tacticity uh, driven glass transition temperature is uh, quite complex. Hence, it is better to remember uh, the values or at least you should understand or you should appreciate that if we change the tacticity of a polymer, there is a possibility of changing the T g value as well. So, we need to determine the T g value. Uh, before we think about a application. Now, there is a significant effect of molecular weight on T g. Now, T g of uh, basically it is given by this expression and I have um, shown these uh, values. You can uh, actually look at the uh, meaning of these uh, parameters like this is the value for T g uh, or polymer having infinite molecular weight this rho is the density of polymer y is the number of chains per polymer chain and so on m n is the number average molecular weight. Hence, it basically at the molecular weight increases the T g value approaches close to a limiting value which is for a having infinite molecular weight. So, as molecular weight increases T g increases, but this increase becomes less less important or less less significant as we go beyond some particular value of molecular weight. For high molecular weight beyond a particular M n practically the value of T g remain unchanged and as branching increases T g decreases as you understand if you have more branches then free volume increases T g decreases. So, effectively this uh, this difference with the in the T g of infinite molecular weight with the particular T g is inversely proportional to molecular weight. So, as the molecular weight increases we approach a limiting value of the T g which is infinite molecular weight. So, if we plot like in this case uh, it is shown for PDMS uh, polydimethyl styloxane and polystyrene. This is a T g value uh, in Kelvin T g in Kelvin and this is uh, M n. So, as you, you can see that as we increases the molecular weight T g goes up and after beyond a certain molecular weight it actually levels off there is no practical there is no change in T g value. So, if we want to and this is you can see that this value is about say 8000, 5000 in this case about 10000 and in all practical purposes we deal with the molecular weight above this, this limiting or this uh, this molecular weight. Hence, when we use for practical purposes, the molecular weight range what we typically use 
they are almost independent of uh, the T g value is independent of molecular weight in that particular range. If we go below a certain molecular weight like oligomeric range or low molecular weight then T g actually becomes affected becomes lower and lower. So, with this I will stop today uh, for this amorphous polymers next I will talk about crystalline state in next class.